one little food bank. Oh, hello, there he is. He has arrived. Hello, hello. The man in conversation arrives. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Brian, good day. How Mate, are you, Jeremy? Um, good, good. I'm just having some troubles with my internet connection. Uh, like many yeah. people, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm not. Yeah, I'm fine. Okay, okay. I know Quentin already sent me a, a message this afternoon and um, said he was one of the ones who was hit by the storm last night. So he's got no, um, mm -hmm. he's got no power, no power and no internet. So I imagine there may be a few people in that, um, in that scenario. Yeah, there's still several tens of thousands of people down the south side who are without, I believe. Wow, okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of them, not until tomorrow, will they get their power back. Yeah. yeah. Unreal. So how, how did you fare through the storm, mate? I'm fine. Okay. I'm in Annerley, so it was, uh, yeah, I was safe. It was cool. Yeah. Didn't lose any power, no nothing. Uh, I'm on cable, and I'm still getting um, 32 meg in one direction. Uh, hang on a second. Are you still with me? I am, yeah. Yep. I'm still okay. here. Yep. So it's you and me tonight, mate. There's Jenny and somebody else. Marvel. Uh, Miliani's in with us. Yeah, I've, I've had to switch to my phone because my laptop's actually not picking up the um, not picking up okay. the internet. So this is a lesson for everybody to have backups and backups and backups. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Very good. So I've, I've got some interesting news to share, some things that I learned at the, um, the cryptocurrency conference over the weekend, um, okay. which was down on the Gold Coast, and also a mm -hmm. couple of things that I've, I've learned today. What, what have you been up to this week, mate? Me? Um, I've just been playing with CoinSpot and okay. because it's, it's the, uh, currently the easiest one for my software to navigate. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been doing, practicing with um, trading, selling, buying, <clears throat> trading coins and all that sort of stuff, mm -hmm. um, um, tokens. So the people who set me up, um, they have back orders for the nano wallets. Right. And um, they'll have those in at the end of March. So they're going to come over here at the end of March. and. Um, be with me and guide me how to search for the tokens I'm looking for because there's a couple of ICOs happening at present. Right. And I'm looking, you know, looking into those. So they're going to show me what to do with those and how to buy. Sure. You get in early. Yeah. Because coins we... it, it waits a month before they put them up there by the time the oh, yeah. coins are settled all of each. Yeah, yeah. I mean, coin spots only the top, the top eighty or something like that. So the um, yeah, the ICOs yeah, won't yeah. be on there for a long time. Which, which ICOs have you been have you been considering? Well, um, there's one coming out called VIN chain, V I N, as in vehicle identification number. Yeah, and um, they're looking for you know people to contribute towards the ICO, mm -hmm. and it's going, it's surrounding automobiles and the VIN numbers and capturing, you know, recording all that, that details. Yeah. And there's another one coming out called um, Spank Chain. <laughs> and, you can, and you can make you what you think of that, and it is true. So okay. they're looking at um, micro transactions or small transactions per, um, you know, people who get amongst the poor. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's, that's a couple I've heard about. And then there's... Um, I know I seem to be getting messages through LinkedIn now because I've got you know, on my um, short little blurb that you'll see when you see my name. Um, yeah, crypto investor too. So you know, <laughs> people are touching base. Very good. Yeah, so it's interesting what's coming out, mate. Mm, mm. Yeah. Okay. No, I, I like I like the idea of um, a VIN chain because that that's one thing. If if you're buying or selling a car. Um, yeah. You want to make sure that registry is updated instantly because someone could have stole the car, you know, the day before, 
and mm -hmm. you're not going to rely on governments actually to be, to be up to date with their stuff. Yeah, so, with their revs. So yeah, yeah. So I find that's interesting. Well, that's I'm going to try and keep an eye on that one. Yeah. Now, now, spank chain because we we talked about one um, a few weeks ago. Um, now it's on the website. I can't remember the name, but it was a it was a peer to peer thing. So sure. you know, um, you'd you'd be on one end of the line and they'd be on the other end of the line, um, and it's decentralized. So you're actually paying the other person directly rather than going through an intermediary. Um, because the 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 stats that I heard was that the intermediary takes up to sixty percent of the money. So you'd you'd pay a hundred dollars, the other person would only actually get forty. But they needed the intermediary because otherwise they didn't have a platform. So I'm not sure is is this one similar or uh which one the, the VIN or the, the spank? The, the, the spank. <laughs> I'm not sure. I, I um I did some more research into it, but it's yeah. it's regarding the, the transaction of um, you know, people pay you know three dollars, five dollars, all sorts of stuff. So yeah. it's it's um, just just micro those sort of small transactions, and it right. makes it happen instantly. So um, I haven't done a great deal of research on it. It's just um, it just appeared in. Where did I read that? That was um, uh, what's that? Coin check or something? I get um, hooked up to a newsletter. I get it every day. Yeah. Um, coin check. Okay. I don't know coin check. It's um. Uh, I don't remember right now. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah. It'll it'll come to you, mate. It'll come to you. You can you can shoot us an email when when you remember, because we're obviously yeah. we're all on the lookout for new ICOs. Um, and you know whatever whatever industry they're in, and you, you can have a look. It's up to you whether you want to invest in them or not. Yeah. Um, I I know I profiled some some porn ones and some marijuana ones a few weeks ago and just said, look, it's just information. You want to yeah. buy, you want to buy. And if you don't want to buy, don't be offended, but just leave those ones on the table. So that's okay. Yeah. Very good. Very good. And, and you get, you're starting to get people ask you questions and things like that, which is excellent. Yeah. They're, they're coming to me saying, you know, I don't know anything. Can you help me? Yeah. And, and I'm thinking, well, I'm not, obviously I know more than what a lot of people out there do. Yeah, um, you know. So, yeah. Well, that that's the idea of this group, mate. Is you know we we don't know everything, but between us, like we know a lot. And if you know five percent more than the other bloke, then you can actually help him out. So. Oh yeah. Oh certainly yeah. Yeah. Very um, cool. Yeah. Sometimes I'll, I'll tell them what I know, and then i'll ask, try and get them to ask me questions and then i'll also try to um, encourage them to get in contact with you as well yeah i appreciate um, that man. yeah so yeah because you know a bucket load more than i do mate <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe yeah. just five five percent of the bucket so uh, no, I, I know five percent of the bucket you know the rest <laughs> <laughs> yeah. very cool yeah. um, well, someone's put a message up there yeah, Will's, Will's just written something and I'm on my phone, so I don't even know how to open that. But um, the chat's going to be saved at the end of this as well. So very yeah, good. It's, um... Guys, I was just going to say for Brian, if he's got someone who's going to teach him how to use a Nano, uh, get him to teach you how to use um, Ether Delta, mate. That's an ERC20 platform. It's, it's a little complicated. There are a number of YouTube videos I could send you to get... Um, you're up to speed, but you'll get all the latest ICOs um, as soon as it become ERC20 tokens in general will be on there. But it is an advanced platform and, um, you know, you just have to be very patient about how you use it. Oh, yeah. There's something you won't know about me as well. Is uh, I'm blind and I use screen reading software. So that makes it even more difficult. Yeah. So the, the the numbers are useful, but the charts not so much. Yeah. 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 That's all good. Well, I mean, I I, I went old school this week because um, last week Quentin was on the call. I got I got to give a shout out to Quentin. He's not on the call tonight because he's lost power and he's lost lost internet. Uh, but I I sent him a little gift for doing up this big spreadsheet of all the top coins on um, on CoinSpot. So there's like seventy or eighty on the list. 
yeah. and he's gone through and rated them um, from different sources by their liquidity and um, by their gecko coin ratings and, and things like that. I sent him a little Boston, Boston watch from the ICO we're doing and he sent me a, a Bitcoin, an actual metal Bitcoin, gold plated one, okay. which is really, really quite beautiful. Um, but his, his spreadsheet, because it's put across in, in the columns, you can actually click on the column and you can sort the coins by their liquidity and you can sort the coins by their gecko rating. You just click on the top of the, um, top of the column and it resorts them all. So okay. if you're looking for a good buy, um, you can actually use his spreadsheet, which is, which is fantastic. Uh, sure. I, I'm, I'm sure he meant it as an information gathering exercise, but just because it's got ratings in there that you can sort from, you know, from highest to lowest. And obviously mm -hmm. a coin with a lot of liquidity is, is going to be a good one to, to buy and hold because uh, you won't get stuck with it. Yeah. So, yeah. Very good. And hopefully Quentin's watching. Thank you very much again. So, Will, what have you been up to this week, mate? Good buddy. Um, so um, I, I've uh, found a couple of ICOs, which I'll post into the Zoom chat. One is Liberton.network. So, um, the Liberton? Liberton Network. Yeah. So that's in the middle of an ICO. Um, mm -hmm. So that particular one is a decentralized lending ecosystem, which just provides access to funds for small underbanked small businesses. Yeah. So um, that's similar to uh, to a couple of others out there. One's called Eastland, which mm -hmm. uh, is, a, is another one I'm looking at. That's quite good at the moment at about eight cents. Um, and, um, the salt and populace. So that's sort of the some the similar similar but different so um yes. so populous is to more to do with uh smart contrast contract invoicing um which um currently the banks take apparently a 28 percent cut of that um when mm -hmm. people use that um particular mechanism yeah um yes so yes so i looked at um that one um give it to network uh, but i've also got um um taken a some positions in Salt Populous and Eastland um, over the current weeks, thanks yep. to the bargain basement seventy five percent correction. <laughs> <laughs> very good, very good. I mean, it, just, despite the correction, it, and and some coins have been hit by by up to eighty percent drop. Yeah. Um, but no, the main yeah. coins have, have gone down like thirty to fifty percent. But there's still some people because they've been holding on for the last, you know, six or twelve months. They're still sitting on thousand percent gains, and they, these guys can use salt. I'm not sure about Debitum and, and Ethland, um, but certainly salt. I've looked at where they can actually borrow against their coins, and and use that cash for other purposes and still allow their coins to grow. So I think it's a great idea. So. Yeah. So Very Jeremy, uh, uh, Eastland, you can you can do that. I haven't actually. Um, participate in that, um, mm -hmm. and your salts um, just got a major backlog to um, for people, but that's yep. quite a bargain price because I believe you can end up to twenty seven dollars, and it's currently around the four to six dollar mark. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's quite good. Uh, Debitum's still an ICO, so they've just recently announced a joint venture with a company called PayPi, another cryptocurrency coin. Um, um, which um, you know, it's got a bit of potential as well. Okay, very cool, very cool. Yeah, I've I've been watching a, a bit of the news today because I've been I've been staying off of Facebook because everything to do with crypto has been banned on Facebook, <laughs> um, and just discovered some interesting other platforms. I went on MySpace for the first time since about two thousand and seven. Um, had a look on MySpace because I thought all, all the guys who were, who were marketing crypto on Facebook, where have they gone? Um, but they haven't gone backwards, they've gone forwards. And there's actually some social networks out there which are powered by the blockchain and um, decentralized and where, where the users actually are paying each other. So a couple of weeks ago, we talked about uh, Steemit, S-T-E-E-M-I-T. -E -E mm -hmm. And that's one where you can actually post content and then when people like it or comment, you actually generate currency um, in their particular, you know, their particular coin, which is called Steam. Um, so mm -hmm. you know, if you've got interesting content, 
and 50 or 60 or 100 people like your content, then you're actually making bankable amounts of money. Um, which is, it's, it's similar to Facebook in the fact that it's kind of like little micro blogs, just you know, articles and pictures and things like that. Um, the other one is kind of similar to Twitter and it's called Leroy, L-E-E-R-O-Y. Um, and with Leroy, it's actually running on the Ethereum blockchain. And to access it from your computer, you need to install a little piece of software to run inside your browser. Um, it's almost like a JavaScript. So when you go onto the, the Leroy site, you're actually running, your browser is running a piece of the blockchain as software inside of your browser. And you go onto this network and you can post content. You have to pay to post content. Um, so it might cost you one, cents to, one cent to post your tweet. But then again, if you know, 10, 20, 30, 50 people like it, um, they're actually paying one cent to like your content. And the money is going to you rather than rather than going to the organisers. So you know, some people might go, "Oh, I don't want to pay pay one cent to post my content." Well, if your content's good, then you can bank behind yourself rather than you know you're you're creating content all the time for Facebook, and Facebook is putting ads all around your your stuff, and Facebook is the one who's making twelve dollars every time someone clicks on an ad next to your story. So this is a way for you to actually make the content. The other thing is because you have to pay one cent every time you post, it means the spammers are going to stay away because they don't want to be able to you know, copy and paste a thousand different times. It's going to cost them money every time they try and post spam. So it has to be actual good content or they've got to have very, very deep pockets, one of the two. So that's a, a couple of interesting, interesting ones that I saw today. Mm -hmm. um, what else have I learned? What else have I learned this week? Uh, Social X, I think we've profiled Social X as well. Um, it's also a, a decentralized, um, decentralized social media platform where the users pay each other. Um, what else? Um, something else I learned today. Yeah, you've probably been to a few sites where you want to buy something and they give you the option of paying by Visa, MasterCard or PayPal. And if you don't have PayPal yet, then you'll soon have PayPal because it's, it's huge. And it's a way for you to pay people with your credit card without actually using your credit card and entering your details every time. So it's certainly faster and it's more secure. Um, but now they're actually having it pop up with credit card, PayPal, or your Ethereum note. And okay. that's using this, um, again, this, this plugin called MetaMask. M-E-T-A-M-A-S-K, uh, which is run on your browser. So your browser actually goes and runs a little piece of the, the blockchain inside your browser. And you know, if, you, if you want to buy a magazine subscription or something like that, rather than typing in your 16 digit credit card number or you know, clicking PayPal and typing in your full username and your password, you can actually click on this little MetaMask thing and it opens up your Ethereum wallet directly in the blockchain and you see the price and you press confirm because it's got all your passwords and things stored on your computer. And there's a little firewall in place to make sure that your passwords and, and identity never gets sent to the, um, to the user, only the money gets transferred. So I believe that started with Coinbase. Um, so because Coinbase is limited to only four coins, you can only pay at the moment with Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin and Ethereum. So, but because Coinbase is onto that one, you can expect the other guys will follow as well. And that may, may help a lot of people who are currently holding a lot of coins and they don't want to cash them out on the exchange um, to actually buy things as well or, or borrow against salt. So, um, that's what I've learned. I've learned about a few, a few different stocks and shares that are involved in, um, in some crypto stuff, but that's probably a subject matter for another call. Um, and also will be on the, on the bostontrading.co website as far as Boston coin, because that ICO is actually listing into, um, into cryptocurrencies as well as the technology stocks. So there's companies behind those that are going to make a, make a good deal of good deal of money with the with the advances in the cryptocurrency and the blockchain networks coming through at the moment. 
So um, I'm guessing that's that's homework, really. Um, mm -hmm. What have I bought this week? Um, Enigma, which we've talked about. Salt, which we've talked about. Ark, A-R-K, uh, is one that I bought into this week. And as near as I can understand Ark, it's Google for blockchain. It's kind of an organized system of actually finding the information that you want. Um, Zcash is one that I bought this week, ZEC. And that's more private than, more private than Bitcoin. Uh, privacy is becoming an issue for a lot of people, particularly when social media sites and Google and everybody knows everything about you and you can find out people's identity on Bitcoin on the blockchain network. So um, Zcash has this thing called ZK Snark and ZK stands for zero knowledge. So once the transactions get processed, it strips away all the data, um, leaving you basically invisible. Uh, what else have I bought? Augur, R-E-P, um, which is a gambling site, but anybody can actually load whatever they want onto, onto there. So it's not just, you know, is my favorite football team going to win? And you can place an each way bet. But you can place totally random things on there, like, you know, the price of Bitcoin is going to be $93,000 by the end of the year. Or I predict that the Queen of England is going to die before Christmas Day or something totally random. Uh, as long as it's verifiable by independent sources, you can actually put up these things and people will make bets on them. And then because you're the, you're the middleman, you will actually be making money off of these bets. So you mm. become like the, the TAB. So that's, that's Augur, R-E-P, which is very interesting, very interesting. And particularly because Australians love to gamble, probably more than most countries. Mm -hmm. um, and you can, you can program your own events. So it can be, can be sporting, it can be political, it can be whatever you can dream up, as long as it can be verified by an independent person. Um, so, Will, you can't just sort of gamble on, well, I can hold my breath for five minutes and then pretend that you've done it because we actually want to see the proof of that. Uh, um, yeah, I guess because there's, there's a lot of people who are blocked out at the moment, uh, blacked out with, I'm, I'm talking blockchain, quite a lot of people are blacked out with their internet and their power. We've got a lot less people on the call, so there's a lot less homework being done. Um, what else can we talk about? Otherwise, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk quickly about Boston and then I'm going to, then I'm going to quit. What do you got, Brian? Hang on. Oh, was it mute or muted? Oh, we've got you. Can, oh, you got me? Yeah, I can't thought I yeah, muted yeah. it. Uh, um, that's fine. Uh, as I mentioned, I've just been really understanding uh, CoinSpot. If I, I just, the difference with me, as you'll understand, Jeremy, when I navigate the site, I just can't um, scan it and mm. see if the numbers have changed. I have to uh, use the up, up and down arrow key or search for a particular coin or cloud token. Yeah. But in saying that this week and last week has given me a great deal of experience in, um, and I've also created an Excel spreadsheet of about uh, 20 different tokens I keep an eye on. Nice. Uh, but I've only bought into about six or eight. Yeah. Yep. And, um, and then some that have hovered and not gone anywhere, I've uh, actually traded those for others, other tokens that have moved right. around for me. Yeah. Um, yep. And as I'm very much a baby in this trading and buying and selling, uh, I haven't gone north yet. However, uh, looking at the prices and what's going to come up in, say, May, when things mm -hmm. might turn around, you know, mm -hmm. I will be. Uh, Benefit, but you know, benefiting by that time. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, but I'm I'm setting up for them. Very good, very good. So, I mean, the, the the smart thing is to be in the market when everybody else is is fleeing the market, and, and, and buying bit. things when they're at a discount. You know, if yeah. if Coles was having half price toilet paper, there'd be a queue around the block of people buying toilet paper or baked beans. Um, but whenever the property market or the stock market falls, then people are sort of usually panicking. I remember, you know, my, my days in 
in the bank and in, in financial planning and people go, oh my God, you know, like September 11, the market's gone down by 30%. I want all my money back because if it keeps going <laughs> down like this, I'll have nothing left. And you're like, yeah. well, it's not going to keep going down. It doesn't just drop 10% every day until you get to 100%. You know, yeah. the property market went down by 30% after the GFC, but it didn't keep going down until it reached zero because no one's mm. going to be giving away their, their shares for zero. No one's going to be giving away their house for zero. Sure. And considering that, you know, to, to mine one Bitcoin costs between $1,000 and $1,700, no one is going to be selling their Bitcoin for less than the cost of the electricity that it costs them to, to dig it out of the ground. Hmm. So, you know, there's it, 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 going to be a bottom. And from the reports I've been reading today on a few different sources, the bottom looks, you know, at the moment, the bottom looks like it's around about 6,000 US. Okay. And there's, there's people who are, who are jumping in, you know, at 6,000 and it gets up to 8,000 and they're jumping out and, and just yeah. trading in this little, in this little channel. Yeah. Um, but when you look at the, the charts for the, you know, 180 day moving average and the 270 day moving average, um, it looks like Bitcoin's actually headed up to be 100,000, which is, you know, crazy from, from where we're sitting right now after we've just seen it drop by 40, 50%. Yeah. Um, but it's certainly in line with what some of the experts were saying a few months earlier. Do, do you mind me asking, um, Jeremy, uh, I've, I've heard that before as well, uh, maybe 100,000 and can even go higher than that over the next you know, four or five years. Yeah. Just um, with these other tokens coming out, other coins coming out, other um, transactionable uh, companies coming out, do you really mm. feel that Bitcoin is going to be as popular in, say, two years' time as what it is being used as a transactionable token? Or? I think, yeah, this, this is just my personal opinion. Sure. Um, yeah, I, I, got, I got pretty cranky with, with Bitcoin over the last probably four to six weeks um, because a lot of the, the ICOs and the tokens that you were buying, you had to transact in Bitcoin. Um, yeah because it was anonymous for the companies, you know, and it was secure. But because Bitcoin can only pr process seven transactions per second, when you've got 100,000 people trying to buy in on an ICO um, and, and the time is running down, you know, like, you know, if you, if you buy within the next six hours, you get a 10% discount or a 30% discount or whatever. And I found the settlements were taking six hours, sometimes overnight. And yeah. I got very frustrated with Bitcoin and I actually sold all my Bitcoin and, and, started using Ethereum and then Ethereum started slowing down. Um, mm -hmm. But Bitcoin is still the dominant coin. It's still the most popular coin. And because it's open source and nobody owns it, there's no CEO, there's no management team, there's no Bitcoin company. Uh, programmers can get in there and they can change the software, which you can't do obviously with your, your Microsoft software, Apple software, uh, but you can with Linux. And you know, people have been jumping in there and going, okay, if we want to have worldwide adoption of Bitcoin and really cut the banks out, what do we need to do? And these guys have been giving up their time and, you know, some of them programming for 5,000 hours saying, okay, how can we make Bitcoin faster than seven transactions per second and this big bottleneck? And uh, there's actually a YouTube video where they're talking about the, the lightning network, what they're calling the lightning network. There's a few guys, mm -hmm. programmers have been working on this. Mm -hmm. And the upgrade to Bitcoin means it will be able to do billions of transactions, literally billions of transactions. So, you know, what they're aiming is it's going to be faster than, than Visa, um, which I think Visa offhand can do about 250,000 transactions a second. Okay. So when Bitcoin can do seven and Ethereum can do 60 and I think Ripple can do about 150. Mm -hmm. But obviously, you know, Visa and MasterCard and these kind of guys are just really, really fast and, and hundreds of thousands of transactions a second. But they, these guys are working on the lightning protocol for Bitcoin to make Bitcoin you know, more fast and more secure than, than any of the credit cards. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, when that thing com becomes a reality, then people will start abandoning their US dollars and their Australian dollars. Saying, yeah. why would I be carrying that around my wallet? Why would I be putting that in my bank? when I can be using Bitcoin and, and paying people quickly and securely and anonymously anywhere in the world. And I've, I've literally got an ATM in my back pocket. Sure. So, yeah. and, and with this, with this thing where, um, where coin, sorry, coin spot um, has, has introduced the, you know, 
credit card, PayPal, or, or CoinSpot transactions, there'll be a lot of businesses who are just saying, hey, we want this. And they just, all they gotta do is open the CoinSpot account on their phone, mm -hmm. and that's their cash register. You know? Sure, yeah. Yep. Um, and it's, it's between them and God, whether they declare all of that income to, to their bookkeeper or to the accountant or whoever, whoever looks over their books, because it'll be off, off record. Mm -hmm. so sure. I think it's, it's very interesting times, mate. I haven't well, seen so, anything like this. Yeah. And it's so, Coindesk Daily is, a, is that website I, I subscribe to. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah. I'm going to write that one down. Yep. Coindesk.com. Um, they're the ones I think that mentioned Spank Chain. Yeah. Yep, yep. And the, the Vin, Vin Chain came through um, uh, LinkedIn. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Very good. Very good. Will, have you got anything to add, Mike? Um, uh, <clears throat> I have a question here. My name is Gustav, by the way. Oh, uh, Gustav, welcome. Yeah, you snuck, in, you. you snuck in. We were talking about you earlier, but... <laughs> oh, yeah. Terrible, terrible. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, so I was wondering, is there any um, way that you can uh, get dividends out of cryptocurrency? Same way mm -hmm. or similar to, you know, shares, for instance. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. Um, I only know, um, sorry, who is it? Uh, Ripple. Um, and I know that one because I've actually got some Ripple. Yes, I know they've, they've crashed down to 73 cents. I, I bought them at $2. They went up to $4.05. I sold them. Um, then they went back down to $2. And I thought, oh, woohoo, I can get it. I can jump in again. Um, bought them at $2. And now they've gone down to 70 cents. That's mm -hmm. because Ripple is aligned with the banking system. Mm -hmm. uh, they actually do pay interest, as it were. Um, so every, every couple of days I get an email from them and they say, you know, we've just paid you 0.004 ripples or, or whatever it is. Oh, um, I see, I see. So okay. I'm, I'm thinking the ones that are in, into the banking system would do that. Um, as, as Will was talking about before, you've got um, Salt who will lend you money. Um, on your uh, on your on your cryptocurrency. So if you if you're holding onto some Bitcoin and saying, look, I've got ten thousand worth of Bitcoin. It used to be twenty thousand, um, but I bought it for three. So I've already made a good deal of money, but I don't want to cash it out yet because I think it's going to go up to be worth fifty. So you can actually borrow against that, and you can take that cash, and then you'll pay a bit of interest. Um, but at least you get to hold onto your coins, and if your coins go up in value, then happy days. But mm -hmm. obviously, for SALT to provide a market where they're lending you money, someone else has to give them the Bitcoins. So you can use your own Bitcoins. You can, you can actually use someone else's Bitcoins. And I I when, I was, when I was looking at it, um, probably early December, you could borrow, like someone was on there with $100,000 worth of Bitcoins that you could borrow. And they were charging interest of around about 1% a day or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but then someone else would come on and say, look, I've got 50,000 Bitcoins and I'll charge you 3% a month or whatever. So it's, it's an open marketplace where people can actually bid for your business, kind of like mm -hmm. eBay, um, rather than just going to the bank and all the banks are saying, oh, look, we'll lend you money, but it's all at 6.7% or 6.8%. There's not much difference between the banks. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously with the open market, people can say, look, I'll, I'll lend it to you for this price. And they might live in a, a very cheap country. They might live in a third world country. Um, so they may be able to do it for cheaper and it's a smart contract. Uh, so it doesn't need an intermediary like the bank. So, Will, have you seen any other ones? Um, so um, me, if you have Neo and you go and what they call staking, and I haven't had this experience because I didn't buy Neo at the bargain price it was in December. Um, you will get paid in gas, so they use GAS, which is another token. Mm -hmm. So one that you can look at to get returns. Um, EOS will be airdropping a lot of tokens on into um, for people that um, have um, st staked and set up a smart contract 
with EOS, um, they'll start airdropping free coins into there. So we get some sort of return because EOS being the Korean based, if I'm correct, and NEO being uh, China based are uh, all a, a type of utility token of which they'll build apps. People will build application or dApps as they call them, similar to what people have done on the Ethereum network. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple that you could um, look at uh, as far as that's concerned. Um, a lot of, because a lot of these things are just brand new and actually haven't made any money, um, the, the, maybe down the track they are thinking that in three to five years' time you will actually get some shares or dividends. However, Jeremy had more experience maybe than I do, but a lot of American companies hardly ever pay dividends. They just keep um, adding it to their share price. Is that true, Jeremy? I don't have any experience there, mate. Yeah, in the in the Australian market, um, when when you're looking at the the top 200 or the top 500 companies, around 95% of the Australian companies actually pay a dividend. So you might pick up you know 4% or 6% per year depending on the share that you own. Whereas in the US, it's it's, it's the exact reverse. 95% of the companies in the US do not pay dividends. Um, they just keep putting the money back into the company and the company keeps going up in value. And when you actually want to release some of the funds, you actually, you actually have to sell the shares. And um, Microsoft has stock splits every now and then. So you might have you know, 100 Microsoft shares that are worth $100 each. And then when the share goes up to be $300 or $500, people go, oh, I'm not buying that share, it's $500. So the stock will actually split. And your 500 shares that you own well, they'll say, okay, now, now you own a thousand shares, but they're two hundred and fifty dollars each, and the shares go back down to two hundred and fifty. People go, oh, that's a cheap share. It used to be five hundred. Now it's two hundred and fifty. Now I'll buy it, uh, which is crazy psychology, but that's what they do. And every now and then, you know, when the, when the stock price is getting too high, they'll they'll do a stock split. So you're selling off some of some of your stocks, which of course will tri trigger capital gains tax. But if you're making the kind of Bill Gates money, you probably don't care about that so much. Um, you know, it, it, is, it is a great system in, in Australia where you do get dividends and nine times out of 10, the, the <coughs> dividends are tax paid before you get them, uh, which is a great system. And, and why our, our market is more stable perhaps than the US because you're sitting on, sitting on the income rather than waiting for the capital gain and you're not paying tax twice on it because you've already paid tax on that money to, to get the money before you bought the shares and then the income again, you, you're not paying tax on that. So it's a good system. But uh, in, in the crypto world, of course, everything's outside of capital gains tax and outside of, outside of income tax. And they're waiting on you to actually report. And I, I saw a story the other day. I don't know how many millions and millions of people in the US own cryptocurrencies, but I'm guessing a lot. Um, you know, maybe in the vicinity of 2 million, 5 million, I'm not sure, but there was 800 people who declared a capital gain to the IRS. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> I think it's 800, 800 people who were probably honest and maybe they didn't declare all of their gains, I'm not sure. And if they'd been buying for a while and then using their Bitcoin to buy things on Amazon and, and from their friends and family, then it would be almost impossible to track their gains anyway. So it's interesting when you when you're talking about it's a, it's a currency, but it's being treated as if it's a stock or a share. Um, and you know, I, I know myself, you know, I, I gave away a lot of bitcoins um, at, at Christmas time to friends and family and, and people overseas and people in Australia and um, also bought some things with Bitcoin and also for, for my Facebook campaigns. Uh, rather than paying Facebook, you know, five dollars or twenty dollars to, to play my ad, I was actually giving Bitcoin to people who, who shared it organically. So I gave away a lot, and I didn't keep track of that. I'm I'm sure most of those people didn't keep track of that when I was paying them one dollars or two dollars or three or five dollars a time. So, yeah, it's it's interesting. <laughs> One day they'll, they'll try and figure it out, but the, the U.S. government is actually at the moment they they're having a meeting. Um, and talking about actually having the citizens pay their taxes in cryptocurrency. So, you know, that's, it's becoming, it's, you know, it's becoming widespread and adopted when they, um, when they say you can actually pay your taxes in, in this currency that's not even US currency. Well, oh, huh? 
Jeremy, did you hear about the Senate meeting? Sorry, Will? Did you hear about that they had a, um, a Senate meeting uh, just recently, the last few days? And basically, the, like, I'll find out the two guys, but they're like, one's the head of the Securities Commission or something, SEC, and the other one was the Chicago Futures Board. Yeah. And uh, basically, the uh, upshot is they just want to get more regulations in for ICOs, but yeah. cryptocurrency is here to stay. So how do we work with it? So that's okay. sort of arrested a bit of the slide in the FUD news from Bitcoin the other day. Um, so, that, yeah, yeah. so it's, um, yeah, it's just only a matter of time before the um, governments uh, all take acceptance on the crypto uh, of the blockchain technology. Mm. And, 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 a lot, and um, Dubai, the United Arab Emirates, is already implementing a program to run their whole government system on a blockchain. Wow. Yeah, so there's... Um, uh, um, do you know Roger Hamilton, Jeremy? Yeah, yeah, I've known Roger many years. Yeah, yeah. okay. Well, he posted it. It was in his Facebook feed, mate. There, I saw okay. an article that he posted about UAE, you know, two or three months ago, maybe it was. But yeah. Here to stay. And um, to answer Brian's, or to add to Brian's question about Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin is um, considered in, in um, the crypto space to sort of be like, for one of a better term, the gold is to the fiat system that we're currently in. So it's sort of the benchmark. So money just tends to flow from the alts to the Bitcoin. And as Bitcoin rises, the other old coins tend to rise, um, can even flow a little bit. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's sort of the backbone, I suppose, of the whole um, currency on the blockchain and moving forward. So um, I've also uh, heard from a number of people that um, don't surprise if we um, zigzag, or if that's a better way, or yo-yo, or go on a roller coaster to 100 green by the end of the year. And uh, there's a futuristic guy um, who um, seems to be pretty much on the button. His name is Cliff High. Have you heard of him, Jeremy? Cliff High. Cliff High. That doesn't ring a bell. No, I'll, email, I'll email you some details, mate. Well, Sounds right, like okay. a dangerous place to play. <laughs> yeah. I, he's, um, no, it's, okay, I'll take the joke part, but on the serious side, he's um, been on the button about produce, um, and um, is um, a programmer from um, way back, mm. and I've listened to quite a few of his YouTube videos and um, how he's um, actually changing, like, he's got he's got an amazing brain. I think he's like Stephen yeah. Hawkins, you know? Because these guys um, have um, what they call web bots and they figure out what's going on and and have got quite an in-depth knowledge of how this crypto is because it's all programming, isn't it? Mm. So it's really, really smart guys that have figured out a way to set up uh, um, things like um, the truth protocol, which basically means if you set up a contract, you can't weasel your way out of it. It's encoded. Yeah. So it's, yeah, yeah. It's an awesome, I think it's um, an awesome technology moving forward. And for mm -hmm. those of us that are willing to see the opportunity now, um, today's the best time to buy, mate. I don't think it will be any cheaper than it is now. Yeah. It may, may drop 10 or 20%, but come, come May, um, yes, you will have at least got three to okay. five weeks what you've invested today. That's how cool mm -hmm. it is. And Jeremy... Yep. It's Jenny here. Yep. Hey, hey. Just, hi. So I was going to say, I, um, I came across a, a site, and I don't know whether you've covered it or not, because I might not have been around, but coinmarketcap.com, which mm -hmm. shows the capitalization of the cryptocurrency market, which has fluctuated between, depending on the day, um, I heard about uh, between 300 to $800 billion, and Bitcoin's now about 35% of that market base. So if you ever want to know what the market cap for crypto is, it's coinmarketcap.com. Thank you. Thank you. I've just written that one down. Yeah, I, I know Bitcoin used to be about 66% of the market, um, but there's a lot more coins have come into the market. And mm. some of these coins have grown a lot faster than what Bitcoin has. So 
it's, it's good to check the space. I mean, we, we, you know, we were talking about the social media before and you know, I went on MySpace today for the first time in many, many years. Um, but certainly MySpace was one of the first players in the social media market, but it didn't end up winning the competition. <coughs> and even, even with the lightning protocol and these things that are coming out new for Bitcoin, we don't know if there's someone who's going to come out, you know, Ethereum might have something superior to that and somebody else might have something superior to that. So it's an interesting space to watch. It's, it's like there's, there's a massive industry that's opened up that wasn't there 10, 15 years ago. And we're watching all of these guys fight it out to see, um, to see who's going to be the winner. And I honestly don't know. Uh, I think it's good that, that Bitcoin is actually improving their, their software and their coding and things like that and making things faster and easier and also cutting the costs. And uh, they're also talking about doing off-chain or off-market transactions. So I can send $5 to Will and it doesn't actually have to go through the entire blockchain as long as we both agree that that's a, that's a legitimate transaction. So there's a lot of improvements coming through all the time. And obviously, you know, we're, we're still seeing new ICOs and very, very clever programmers who are coming in with new stuff. I mean, the guy who created Ethereum was 19 at the time. He's only 24 now. Um, so very young, very smart cookie. And I watched one of his YouTube clips and I was just going, holy cow, like this guy knows, knows a lot of stuff. Um, and he talks really fast. <laughs> so it's kind of hard to follow what he's going on about. Um, but it's, there's, there's some amazingly clever people out there who are, who are doing some incredible work. And it's really about decentralization because they believe in the concept of cutting out the banks, cutting out the middleman and bringing power to the people. And a lot of these guys have worked for years and years um, without getting paid because they actually believe so much in the concept. They get rewarded when they list a coin or they get rewarded when the coin they're working on actually goes up and they will program their thing to make it even better, which is which is amazing when you think about it. I mean, Will's sitting there at home tinkering on his car to make his car go faster. But um, then sharing that, that knowledge with everybody for free to help them make their cars go faster, that's, that's, you're talking about some really amazing people with not, not just the brains, but also the heart to change the world. So very impressive, very impressive. Uh, I, um, I mentioned briefly about Boston Coin. Um, which is also listed on the Trillionaire website, which has been updated again. And that's the coin that we're launching. Start date is the, the 8th of April, is the, the official launch date. It's in pre-ICO at the moment. And the intention is to have a, an ETF-like coin similar to a mutual fund or a managed fund with up to 200 of the top coins and up to 200 of the top technology stocks. So again, I don't know whether Bitcoin is going to be the winner or Ethereum is going to be the winner. But out of all of these altcoins, they all need graphics cards to get processed. They all need hard drives. They all need offline wallets, that sort of stuff. So investing in the companies who actually make this, uh, make all the, the hardware and, and the software behind them, means it doesn't matter which coin wins. We're actually going to come out on top. And obviously, with the volatility that's been in the market this week, you know, Bitcoin dropping down by more than 50%. Uh, at the same time, there was five or six coins in our portfolio that went up by like 130%. So um, I, will, I will be publishing those every month for people who actually own the Boston coin um, and, and sharing the coins that we're actually buying and trading and holding on there as well. So um, we're giving discounts, we're giving perks, we're giving, you know, watches and mugs and Boston slippers and all kinds of silly things on the <laughs> website. Um, but just to raise awareness and, and get people talking about it. 2018, of course, is the year of the dog. So it's cute to have a Boston Terrier as the mascot for that one. But <laughs> the, the idea is stability in the markets. And there wasn't very many people that I knew who actually held stocks and shares uh, in the late 80s, early 90s. But once compulsory superannuation came along in around about 1992, every man and his dog owned a managed fund through their superannuation. And then they started to look at the returns and look at these things and going, oh, I own you know, shares in 100 different companies or 200 different companies. And that's when the banks really started to get into making these managed funds for retail investors. So you could walk into one of the banks and you could actually whack down $1,000 on the table and you could buy the top 200 stocks. 
And for many people, that's how they, they got interested in the stock market itself, uh, was through these managed funds, through this superannuation thing. So that's what we're creating here, is a, something that trades like a coin, but actually reacts like the entire market, rather than just having the volatility of one coin that can rocket up overnight and then crash down again the next day. So. We've got a couple of minutes left. Any questions on the websites, on the social medias, on any of the coins? No, Will's good. Brian? I have another question go? though. Yeah, Gustav, go. Yeah, all right. So uh, is there any good way to short any ICO if you trade and or uh, don't really? With, with, with the normal ICOs, uh, the best way to short them is if you don't like them, stay out of them. Yep. Um, yeah. the, you, you can short Bitcoin on the Chicago Board of Exchange. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, for, for them to actually have short contracts, they, they need to have a coin with 100% liquidity. A lot of the ICOs don't have that. And they need to have a coin that's literally already got billions and billions of dollars in the marketplace. Um, otherwise, it, you know, it is a big expense for them to actually be, be taking the other way bet. So you can short Bitcoin, but there's not any other coins that I'm aware of that can be shorted at the moment, not even Ethereum. So, true, 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 true. Yeah. All right. Cool. Excellent. Okay, everybody else, make sure. We, actually, I think, I think last, next week is our, is our last scheduled call of this round for, for the Krillionaire video group chats every week. Um, I put this out as a trial for like six or seven weeks and wanted to do it every week and build a bit of momentum and help people through the initial stages. Um, I'm, I'm going to have a chat and with some of you guys and, and with some of the other people and decide whether we're going to have a monthly call or a fortnightly call or whether we just don't do any calls anymore because everybody knows what they're doing now. Uh, but so stick around for the, for the next week's one. And um, make sure you check the Krillionaire website because I will be updating that, of course, uh, with, with different things that come out. And there's, there's still people who are contacting me on a daily basis and saying, which exchanges do I, do I use and which coins should I buy? So any of the research that I'm doing, I'll be sharing on the Krillionaire site. And any of the coins that I'm actually buying or selling will be going on the bostontrading.co. So stay tuned on the blogs there. And uh, we will chat to you all next week. Thank you very much, Gustav, for coming along. Thank you, Will, for sharing. Thank you, Brian, for, for playing with us. And mm -hmm. um, thanks to Quentin, who's, who supplied me with this little metal Bitcoin and with, with the spreadsheet, which has actually turned out to be a more useful tool than I thought even at first. So thank you, mm -hmm. guys. Enjoy. Stay safe. And I'll chat to you soon. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank Cheers. you, everyone. Thanks, Jeremy. <laughs> There's the Boston Terrier. <laughs>